What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Nysish and today we are talking about automatic farming for any type of plant. Now, uh, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, I'm not going to set up a, you know, a power supply and do the whole, you know, uh, you know, setup to show you how to run power. You know, this assumes that you have some sort of setup on your your farm already, or you have some sort of power supply setup already. Uh, and two, I'm, I'm not. I've, I've got a generic water system set up over there just so you understand how I've set up each of these examples that you see, so that you know you know what's going on in the background. Uh, the purpose of this video is to focus on the circuit for the automatic farming less how to set up power and things like that. I'll link videos to related, you know, to relevant stuff I've made that'll help you with that if you have questions about that. Uh, and then also, it also assumes that you are growing clones of a plant and not just random assortments of plants. Uh, of course, you can use this for that, but it won't be as accurate. So it's assuming that you have you know, you've picked some clone or you've, or you've, you know, crossbred and made what you want, or you've just found a good one and you clone it and plant it a bunch of times. So it assumes that every plant in these systems based on my calculations are the same. Of course, you can choose not to do that, but it won't quite work as, as well as, as you might see here. So, um, that'll just be, you know, something to keep in mind. So, uh, now what in this setup here, I've got a couple of areas. We've got this generic water system. Like I said, we'll cover that real quick. I've got these uh, rate experiments for one, two, three, four, and then over there six planters, and I'll explain why those are there and you know the reason I'm showing you those. Uh, and then I've got the two you know examples here: automatic farming for four planters, automatic farming for six planters. Um, and what we're going to do is, and then of course over here we've got the data section, you know, so you understand how to calculate what you need for these timers. And so the point's going to be we're going to you know go through this example for four planters um, so that you understand how this one is set up and how to build it. Uh, and then in the end, we're going to do this automatic six planters where we're actually going to figure out how much, you know, the rate we need for the equation and stuff. So um, just kind of show you like if you were doing this from the beginning, what it would be like and how to how to program this the best way. Uh, and so uh, so we're going to go ahead and start by covering the data because this is sort of the most important part, uh, because what we have here and again, we'll go over this in more detail in a minute. Uh, but what we have here are two timers. We have a sprinkler on timer on the left and we have a sprinkler off timer on the right. Uh, and you have to determine how long you want those sprinklers to run and then be off for. And the reason we're doing that is that we're trying to achieve a saturation state. We're trying to hold it. So right now I have these just set at 5,000 um, because if you've done any planting, you know that you know 9,000 milliliters of water, if you fill this up uh, with water, that's too much for the plant and it's not optimum growing. So the goal is keep the saturation state at an optimum spot for the plant by by calculating that using these equations over here and setting these timers to 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 reflect that. So, you know, I've chosen 5000 because that that will give you 100% on some of the plants or you know, maybe even all the plants for all I know. But the point is, is that you'll see down there, it says water 0% when that's in when this planter has a saturation that's optimal for the plant that water will say a hundred percent and so you know this with a perfect uh, hemp clone will work five thousand so i think between like five and seven thousand is generally good for plants um you can tell just look at it what it says when it's planted in there so i'm gonna go with five thousand because that's gonna work here um so we're gonna try and hold that so how does this work we have to we have to figure out these two timers for that based on what plants we're planting and the rate of our sprinklers. And so the way you do that and the way I do that is I do it with these two equations. I have the sprinkler on time and the sprinkler off time. So the sprinkler on time is the buffer divided by the fill rate minus the uptake rate. The buffer, as you can see here, is the difference between the minimum and maximum milliliters of planter saturation you want, just like we were talking about over there. You can see this graphically uh, here. You can imagine this is a cup full of water and that buffer, which is right here, uh, is is where the plant wants to be. So that's the, the level of water. This is the 5,000 line, for instance, that I've got going on. Maybe you have it at 6,000, whatever. You have some area the plant wants to be in. And so the way you determine the buffer number to use here is you take the maximum you want it to be minus the minimum you want it to be, and that's the buffer. So let's say I wanted this to be from between 5,000 and 4,950. So that's if you subtract those, you just get 50. I want it to only have a range of 50 before it fills this back up to 5,000, right? Or something close anyway. And so that's how you do the buffer. You could choose whatever you want. You could say 6,000 and 6,500, and you subtract 6,000 um, 6, from 6,500, you'd have a buffer of 500. It doesn't matter. You just choose how much of a range you want that box saturation to to ebb and flow, I guess you could say, 
uh, and then you use that number here. So in this case, I'm gonna go with 50 because that's the example I've got over there. And so my buffer is 50 for this, this example. So the fill rate is the rate in milliliters per minute of the sprinklers to a large, a single large planter. Um, I won't get into this, but it's scalable. So you don't have to think about all four. You can, and whenever you do this, you only have to think about one to do any of these equations. So, so the fill rate is with these two sprinklers, you know, they cut, they, they divide up as the more boxes they're touching, they divide up their output. So what is the fill rate per minute of a single planter based on how many planters you have? Because it changes depending on how many planters you have. So that's the fill rate, and we'll discuss how to get that over here. And then finally, the uptake rate we already talked about, that's the plant itself. It tells you five mil, this one's four milliliters per second, this one's six milliliters per second. So it depends on what you're, what you're planting and whether it has W genes or, you know, whatever. It depends on the genes in the plant. So. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna use five. It's an easy number to deal with. So we're gonna pretend all the plants I'm planting are five milliliters per minute. And so that would be your uptake rate, but it's not just five milliliters per minute. It's five times the number of plants in a single box. So this will fit nine. So if it's five, it's five times nine is 45 in this case. So the uptake rate is 45 per box. And that's what you want. So that's great. The buffer is not hard to conceptualize there. We can calculate that pretty easily. The uh, fill rate of, or the uptake rate of the plant is just the plant's uptake rate times the number of plants in the box. So 45 in this case, but what about the fill rate? How do you know what these, the fill rate is based on your, on your sprinklers? And so that is what this whole thing is. And so you can just use my numbers if you want, or you can de um, derive your own experiments, however you want to do it. Uh, but each of these, like I said, is set up with this generic water system. It's a it's a pump going to a purifier, going to the small pump, going to two sprinklers. If you're in a fresh water zone, you can eliminate this and just go straight from here to here. This requires, I think, five, five and one. So it's just 11, 11 volts you'd send here uh, to do this. And so very simple. That's what's running each of these things. And what we're going to do is I have one here one planter, two planters, three planters, and four planters. And each one has the same number of sprinklers, two sprinklers set up to a timer that is set to 60 seconds. And this is how we can determine our rate. So if I run these, they're just going to turn the sprinklers on in each box here to run for 60 seconds over the number of planters that they're uh, they're 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 on top of. So here we have four, three, two, and one. And so the rate you fill up these is going to be different because these sprinklers are going to cut up what they're putting out between how many they're touching right so so once we know what the the rate is then we can determine that final number and this is exactly how i did this i just set up this this little experiment so um, note that i've got some of these in the corner i did that just kind of as, a, as an example that if you say had more planters out here on this edge here uh this you know this edge here along the side um, if you put the sprinklers right in the middle, they're actually going to touch planters on the outside and start dividing up, you know, water that you don't want divided up. So if you're trying to keep, say, four, you know, over here, I've got it as a better example. The four sprinklers that I have over here, or the two sprinklers, sorry, and these four, if you had sprinklers here, 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 and here, I'm sorry, <laughs> planter boxes here, 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 and here, um, this, these wouldn't touch it because they're not dead center. They're off to one side. So. Now that this is finished, we can go see what the rate is. And so if you just look at each planter box, it'll tell you this is 360. I have two of these going. So obviously if it was one, it'd be 180, but this is 360 milliliters per minute with two over one box. This is 175 with two over two boxes. And then three boxes is 125 and sometimes actually 120. This can vary a little bit. So it it's never quite perfect but you can definitely, the, the, the range that the plants are in 100% is big enough that it's not critical that this be exact, just close. And this one is 72. Um, the first four times I did it, it was 75. Um, so it just depends on you know how many to. So I go with 75 on this, that's a good number, and you can adjust it based on what you see after you grow a crop. So that's how you determine that rate. In this case, we've got a, a uptake rate, or I'm sorry, a fill rate. In this case, I'm gonna go with 75, not 72. Um, and so it's gonna be the buffer is 50 divided by 75 minus 45. And that's gonna give you right here. Here's the example. I have my buffer of 50. My rate I'm using is 75. That was the, the most common number I got running this experiment multiple times. Minus 45, which is five mLs times nine spots. So that's 45. That gives you 
for three minutes. So that might seem like a lot, um, but once you get the hang of this, it's really not that bad. So 1.43 minutes, of course, these are in seconds. And so 1.43 times 60 is 86 seconds. So you're gonna set the sprinkler on timer to 86 seconds. The sprinkler off timer is much easier. It's just the buffer divided by the uptake rate. So if your buff buffer is 50, your uptake rate is 45. It's just 50 divided by 45 gives you 1.11 minutes. That in seconds is 67 seconds. You would set this to 67 seconds and that's it. And so if I were to plant this and run it, so if I, just, if I turn this on, the way this works is that it runs the off timer first by design. Um, that's how I like it because what I like to do is set my box to whatever I want. Now, of course, there's no plants in here, so they're not gonna be uptaking anything, but um, once this thing runs, it's 60, what I say, 67 seconds, it's just gonna, it's gonna shut off and it's gonna swap to this one. And this one's gonna run for 86 seconds. So those things will run for 86 seconds. And it's just gonna do that back and forth, back and forth until you turn it off. Um, so if I turn this off, I mean, we'll, we'll let it run once, but once it's run, if I turn it off, it just resets the system and always starts back again with the off timer. And so that gives you the chance to plant the plants, put them in there, come over, start it because they're uptaking and that's the kind of the direction you want it to go. And that is, that's that's how you calculate this. Uh, it might seem a little, a little crazy at first, but I promise you it gets easier the more you the more you do this. Um, so then finally, while this is running, I'm just gonna kind of go over how to build it. So you can you know pause it here, take a screenshot or whatever, um, but you're gonna need obviously two timers, uh, two blockers, one, two, three, four, uh, four uh, uh, brand switches, a switch and a uh, splitter, and of course the pump. And I see how this is turned on. You know, the off timer has, has expended. It's now kicked on the on timer, which will go for uh, 86 seconds. And it would just keep doing that as the plants are growing, keeping this, of course, gonna grow because there's nothing in there, right? But, but it would work if there were plants growing in here. And so that's it, it just goes back and forth. And so um, to build this, like I said, you need those components. The, this is a, a fictitious power source. So you would just run whatever your power source is, you know, your battery would come from this, pretend this is your large battery, I guess. Run that into a branch. That branch is gonna be set to 17. That's gonna compass everything it needs to run, uh, including this pump over here. Um, so you set that 17, it runs into a, uh, a, a, a switch, you know, or you can use a smart switch, I guess, if you want. Um, into a switch and the output of that switch is gonna run to this branch over here. This branch, so you should have 16 arriving. This one is set to two, so you leave this in its its default configuration because you just wanna pop this one out and come up to the pump, which is I think actually a little one volt too much, but you know, whatever, it's an extra volt. So you're gonna run that to the pump power out of this this branch out here. The We're gonna daisy chain this branch to the second branch. So the, the power out of this branch is gonna run to the power in of this branch. Uh, this branch is gonna be set to five, the branch out. And so the reason is, is because you have, from that component, you need to power this timer, which is one. You need to power this uh, this branch here, which is two, and then we need two and one. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. And so that's the five volts you need there. Um, the power out is just going to take whatever's left. That's why this is set to uh, 17 because I needed seven to come out of here because I need one to power this splitter and then I need two coming out of here, two coming out of here and two coming out of here. And each of these is just powering a component. So this for, and it doesn't matter which of these you send to which of these components up here, um, but one of them is gonna go to this blocker here. So you have two, one to power it, one to pass through and activate this timer when it's time. Uh, same thing on this other one, exact same thing, one to power it, one to pass through and power this. And then the other, the last one to, you have one to power this timer and one for that timer to pass through and hit this blocker. And so that's that's literally it. Um, it might seem a little convoluted, but actually if you if you map it out, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. So that's all you do. And once you have this set up like this, um, you're ready to go. And so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off to show you that it will reset. So if I start this again, it's going to start again on the off timer. It always starts no matter where it is back on the off timer, which is good. So when you're harvesting, you can shut it off. You can check the saturation of your of your beds, make sure they hovered around the buffer where you wanted them to. And then and then that's it. Uh, and so the final thing we're going to do now that we've covered all this is we're going to we're going to set up six planters here. We've got these six planters here. Um, I've already set them all to 5,000 just using the can. That's just sort of a convenient way to, to saturate them. 
And uh, I'm gonna show you, since we've already covered this, um, we know, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the, with the buffer of 50, um, but I'm going to, I don't know what the rate is. I know my plants again are 45, we're gonna say, so five times nine is, is 45. So, you know, over here on this equation, we know that the uptake rate for that six over there is gonna be 45 again. We know the buffer is gonna be 50 again, but we don't know what the fill rate is because we have, uh, well, we didn't do that one. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to run this again, 60 seconds, and I've got three this time. So it's different. I don't really know. I know two wouldn't be enough probably. So I've got three sprinklers going um, over these six beds. And I wanna see in 60 seconds what my what my fill rate is. So I'm just going to speed up that for a second. All right, there we go. And so now we can look at these and say, okay, these are 74. Um, I had two other ones before this that were 76, one that was 75, one that was 77. So I'm just gonna go this time with uh, 76. And so this actually points, you know, brings up a good point that, you know, with 180 milliliters per minute with a single, with a single uh, sprinkler, it should be 540 divided by six, which should give you 90, but it doesn't, it gives you around 75, 76. And so there is a loss there. That's why you, you can't just do the straight calculation. So, so we're going to go ahead and go and say this is 76. And so if we go back over to our equation, uh, we're going to say, all right, well, our buffer is 50. Our, our fill rate is 76, which we just determined 75, whatever you want to use minus 45. I'm going to go with 76 minus 45 is 31. So 50 divided by 31 is 1.6. Uh, seconds and that, or minutes, excuse me, 1.6 minutes. That in seconds is 97 seconds. So we're gonna go with 97 seconds for the sprinkler on time. The sprinkler off time is just going to be the 50 buffer again, divided by the plant's uptake rate, which is just five times nine, so 45. So that's the same as the other one. And that's just gonna be 67 seconds again. So what we're gonna do is go over here and let's say that you've built this. Now you might notice that I have left out these lines. I've left out the power out of this blocker to the power, the toggle on of this timer. And I've left out the, the uh, power out of this blocker to the um, toggle on of this timer, because when I turn this on, uh, had those been connected, they will run. So in order to set the values, the easiest way to set the values is to disconnect this line, this yellow line here, that was set up over here. I'll show you again here. We've got that all run there, right? We've got the power out there to the toggle in there. Same thing over here. Um, I disconnected those two yellow lines because uh, that way I can set these. And so uh, with that powered, I can then say my first one, I was gonna set to uh, 97 seconds. So I'd set that to 97. The second one, I was gonna set to 67 seconds. This is the, the, the sprinkler off one. And there we go, now they're ready. And so to get this ready for, to run them, you would just connect your lines back to your uh, thing and see how that's already running. So I'm gonna turn that off now that I've set those. I don't want that running yet. And I'm gonna set this one over here. So it's best to actually turn that off before you do that. There we go. And so now we've hooked it up. So now if I turn it on, it's gonna start on the off timer first, which is what we want. Your plants would be growing and using some water. And then once they've, they've grown and used some water, uh, they'll be, it'll turn back on at the right interval. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, reset this system. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Um, our current one is at 5,006 and we'll see how close it is. Cause I wanna show you, I'm just gonna time-lapse this and actually grow um, a bunch of plants. Um, and I'll time-lapse it through the entire growth cycle so that you can see this thing turning on and off and show you that, you know, I don't even know what's gonna happen in the end. We'll see how close it is because you can adjust these a little bit. If it's a little, if it uses a little too much water in the end and you want it to be a little more, you could say increase this by a second for the sprinkler on time and just kind of tweak it to your liking. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll get that set and then we will recap in the end. Okay, I've planted planters, uh, you know, I've put some genetically perfect uh, via admin into each box. We have 100 water at the 5,000-ish, and uh, we're gonna go, I added some lights real quick, and we're going to start this up. There we go, we're on the sprinkler off timer, and we're gonna time-lapse and see how it does. All right, and here we go.
All right, let's check to see where these are at. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Uh, let's see, these are, uh, yeah, these are pretty good. These are fruiting, so not quite in the ripe stage, but but you get the point. And let's see, our water is at 47.92. That's not bad, actually. Um, that's still 100% for the plant, so we lost a couple hundred milliliters over time. So I'd probably, to adjust for that, to compensate, I'd probably either you know try adding five seconds to the to the uh, the sprinkler on timer or remove five seconds from the sprinkler off timer. Uh, either one to just sort of play with that until I hovered closer to to the 5,000 mLs that I was trying to keep at. So that's, yeah, that actually worked pretty well. So that folks is pretty much all I've got. I know this was kind of a, kind of a big, big video, lots of uh, technical stuff in here. So if you need questions, please, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, you can also get me on my discord. See you later.